these days poor parenting choices seem to be a major problem. You need a license to drive but these parents will convince you that you need a license to procreate. In this edition we take a look at 10 epic examples of bad parenting. Welcome. This is Motley TV. Drivers on a Mississippi interstate got the shock of their lives when they noticed an 8 year old boy behind the wheel of a car. The boy's father had gotten so drunk that he decided to let his son drive them home on a busy highway so that he could take a much needed nap. The motorists alerted the police who also discovered the boy's 4 year old sister in the back seat without a seat belt. The father received multiple charges and his kids were temporarily placed into child protective custody. It's a video like this that makes you cringe. Two teenage girls walk up to each other and start swinging. They're pulling hair, rolling on the ground, and punching away. Now look around. A handful of people seem to be loving every minute of this, egging them on. We can't play the audio because it's full of profanity. West 2 showed this to Orlando police. We asked if there's a crime taking place here. They zeroed in on the woman in the blue sweatshirt and identified her as Sandra Padilla Miranda, a parent of one of the girls. A mother in Florida was arrested and charged with child abuse and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. This was after she arranged a fight between her 14-year-old daughter and a 17-year-old girl. Sandra Miranda, presumably a WCW enthusiast asked her daughter's arch-rival to come over after school so the girls could settle their beef. Not over a cup of tea and scones, but in a manner suitable for prison gang rivals. The girls, aged 14 and 17 started throwing fists to a large cheering crowd. Like most things these days, the violent fist fight went viral after being recorded and posted on Facebook, eventually catching the attention of the police. Throughout the fight, Sandra could be heard repeatedly yelling in Spanish, hit harder, and even encouraging her daughter to imagine her opponent as a cheese sandwich and bite her. In the Bronx, New York, Police charged parents Carol Savory and Leonardo Rise with endangering the welfare of a child after they left their 8-month-old son in a parking lot. The baby was spotted by a vendor sitting alone on the hot concrete outside the courthouse. Savory and Rise had both made an appearance before the Bronx family court and were arguing. When they left, both assumed the other had taken the child. One police source said, it was just parental confusion. But that confusion left the baby in the sun for what seems to be hours. He was taken to Lincoln Hospital, where they found he was dehydrated but not otherwise hurt, and then released into the care of Child Protective Services. The vendor's wife said of Savory, she doesn't deserve to be called a mother. For their birthday present, most 7-year-old girls ask for a doll, a tea set or a pony. At the very most your little munchkin might even ask for a trip to Disneyland. Poppy Burge on the other hand is not like most kids her age because she nagged her mom for months leading up to her birthday for nothing other than breast augmentation surgery. It's easy to understand why when you realize that Poppy's mother is Sarah Burge, the self-described human Barbie. She herself has spent hundreds of thousands on countless cosmetic surgery procedures. The little girl's wish was granted when she was handed a $10,000 voucher for a boob job. Legally she can only redeem the voucher when she turns 16. Maybe kids these days grow up so fast that even their own bodies can't keep up. The little girl expressed her joy by saying I can't wait to be like mummy with big boots. They're so pretty. It's the most outrageous thing that I've ever heard You've of. already taught your seven-year-old daughter that no matter what happens, when she turns 18, she's not good enough. I never said that at all. I'm yes, she did. The she eyes said it in the tape. Yeah. She I... said, I'm excited to have this because she, she's predicting that when she's 18 and old enough to use it, she's not going to be happy with herself. There are loads of 18-year-olds out there that would love to be presented with a voucher for breast surgery or anything. Seven-year-old, like... though? No, not a se I'm talking you about just gave your seven -year -old. Because I'm an associate of a cosmetic surgery and company. Any associate of any cosmetic yes, surgery does. anywhere it's... would not give a seven-year-old a gift yes, certificate for plastic because surgery I'm in... I'm if gonna they were thinking straight. Because I'm in a position to do so. Yes, because I'm a cuter.
saya Diana anak saya yang ketiga ini namanya Aldi harapan saya pergi ke Jakarta ini Aldi untuk berhenti merokok An Indonesian toddler named Aldi Rizal made international headlines in 2013 when he was recorded chain-smoking cigarettes. After capturing the world's attention, the boy's mother revealed in an interview that she began giving him cigarettes after discovering that smoking stopped his persistent crying, and before he could recite the alphabet, his habit had skyrocketed to a staggering 40 cigarettes a day. According to recent reports, Aldi has succeeded where numerous adults haven't and no longer smokes. Saya namanya Kak Seto, saya seorang psikolog, doktor di bidang psikologi, dan sudah lebih 40 tahun. Saya mengenal Aldi, eh, pertama melalui media, eh, orang tuanya ingin eh, bertemu, eh, mengajak eh, Aldi supaya diterapi. Nah, itu selama kurang lebih satu bulan, sehingga kalau sekarang secara berlagi, mudah merasa. Iya, eh, melalui main, artinya dia dengan gembira, berlari, memanjang, itu semua bisa dilakukan dengan baik, maka saya optimis bahwa Aldi akhirnya betul-betul bisa berhenti merokok sama sekali. After a couple realized that they could no longer afford the monthly payments on their second-hand minivan, they decided to pay their debt by trading sex for the car payments. They made a disgusting agreement with 67-year-old used car salesman Robert Bearden to have sex with their 14-year-old daughter so that they wouldn't have to make monthly payments on their car. Perhaps the salesman's ad said, Ford minivan for sale, trade in your old vehicle or your daughter. The used car salesman and the girl's father were both found guilty of molestation and sentenced to 10 years behind bars. This is breaking news from ABC4. A Salt Lake County woman is behind bars accused of offering a man her 13-year-old relative's virginity for $10,000. ABC4's Annie Cutler just spoke with DA Sim Gill. Annie, has this been going on for some time? Well, at this point, it's unsure how long this is going on. It's certainly a very serious case that they're looking into every aspect, looking and turning over every rock to make sure that they have all the information they need. But at this point, we can tell you that the suspect in this case is a, 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 a Felicia Ray McClure. And she, again, was offering sex with uh, a family member of hers, an underage family member, to a gentleman for upwards of about $10,000. In 2011, Felicia McClure of Utah was charged with multiple counts of sexual abuse and exploitation of a minor after attempting to sell her 13-year-old daughter's virginity. After slapping a $10,000 price tag on sex with her underage daughter, the mother-turned-pimp sent multiple text messages to a potential buyer and distributed indecent photos of the teenager. Felicia's own boyfriend came to the rescue after discovering a text message from an interested buyer and promptly alerted the authorities. The government estimates 14% of Korea's youngsters are at risk of internet addiction. 24-hour internet cafes, known as PC Bang, are now off-limits to teenagers between 10pm and 9am. But nearly every home has high-speed broadband, so the government's also preparing a bill to limit youngsters' ability to log on at night. An unemployed couple in South Korea got a hard dose of physical reality after they were arrested for the death of their three-month-old daughter. Doctors discovered that the infant's cause of death was starvation. It later emerged that the couple neglected their baby daughter for hours as a result of being addicted to an online virtual reality game. Escape to an all-new farm set along a beautiful coast. Play with or without an internet connection. Play with your friends. Or on your own. Play for a few minutes. Or as long as you want. Alexandra Tobias was sentenced to 50 years in prison after pleading guilty to second-degree murder after the death of her three-month-old child. Apparently, little Dylan's crying was interfering with her game of Farmville on Facebook. In her testimony, she claimed that the baby's crying made her so angry that she violently shook the infant and went outside to smoke a cigarette in order to calm herself down. She was still angry when she returned so she violently shook the poor child again this time ending his life. I'm asking for mercy. 
I realize I do deserve consequences, but the death of my son is a life sentence in itself. So straight to that top story. On the third day of the so-called House of Horrors trial, Josef Fritzl has changed his pleas, now saying he is guilty of all charges, guilty for rape, for incest, for enslavement, and finally guilty as well for murder. This, uh, these charges following the revelation that the now 73-year-old retired engineer kept one of his daughters, Elizabeth, locked up in the cellar of a family home as other members of the same family, including his wife and other children, even lodgers at certain points, apparently lived obliviously upstairs. Guilty of effectively using his own daughter as a sex slave for some 24 years, chaining her up at various points, giving her no access to light or proper ventilation. Guilty of having seven children with her as well. One of those babies died after three days after childbirth, hence the murder charge. In Austria in 2008. 42-year-old Elizabeth Fritzl told in harrowing detail how she had been imprisoned by her father Joseph Fritzl in a dungeon for 24 years. The ordeal began at the age of 18 when he forcefully locked her in a cellar below the family home. For the next 24 years she was forced to give in to her father's daily demands for violent sex, which resulted in the birth of seven children and one miscarriage. Four of the children grew up with their mother in the dungeon. The other three were raised by Fritzl and his wife Rosemary, having been reported to authorities as orphans. One of the children later died. The nightmare came to an end when Kirsten, one of the girls he had fathered became critically ill. Fearing that she would die he finally relented to the family's wishes and decided to take her to the hospital for treatment claiming her only as his granddaughter. Fritzl claimed that he had no contact with the sick child's mother as she had joined the cult. Doctors were unable to diagnose the cause of her illness and made a televised appeal for her mother to come forward. Eventually, Fritzl allowed Elizabeth to go to the hospital and soon thereafter told her harrowing story to the police.